you'll be learning several things today that will help you not look like a script kitty in regards to SQL injection attack. So the first thing is that you've got a website you're targeting. And of course, behind every website, there is a backend database system. And this is the system that we're targeting. And we are targeting it through something called the SQL injection attack. So your BFF, Mr. Heckeloy, would first go over into the website and what your BFF will do is to look for all these different input fields that we can then target the queries into the backend database. And we do so by inserting certain special characters like single quote, double quote, semicolon, dash dash, hex, and so on and so forth to look for ways of breaking the expected query. And to make the attack have high likelihood of succeeding, we can be using things like encoding, Darby encoding, and so on in order for us to try to bypass any form of security mechanisms that are in place that checks our payload. Good news is that there could be another part of the website that allow us to integrate the web services directly without getting true into those inspection points. And yes, I know your BFF, Mr. Hacker Law, is really smart. Disclaimer, hacking is illegal. Remember to ask your mom for permission first before you go around hacking. So right in front of us, we are able to get over into a page that is following a SQL injection blind. And it's already giving us a hint that we're using web services with the simple object access protocol. So it's a pretty good hint. However, in many cases, when you're crawling through the site, you can also discover those pages and those definitions that we can target. So in this case, we want to understand first, how does the function operate? So if I go in and select under GI Joe retaliation and click go, and if I scroll down now, we can see that we have 100 movie tickets available in our stock. So this is something that we're able to see immediately. At the same time, if you see over here, we have some change on the URL. So you have the underscore five dot PHP question mark title equal GI Joe and we have a plus retaliation and action equal go. So this is a pretty good idea for us to, to get started. Now if I go ahead and change this to say Iron Man and I click go on this with the following of 53 movie tickets available in our stock and of course same thing we can see that the URL has changed with the title equal Iron plus man and action equal go. So if I was to go ahead and change up the payload a little, all right, so we have iron plus man. And right now, what I do is I have the following of or one equal one. And I hit enter on this. What do we get? If I scroll down further, you see that there's a slight change to things. We have 100 movie tickets available in our stock. So it means that the SQL injection went through. And of course, at the same time, you can easily test for this type of SQL injections using different type of tools. Now, moving over to terminal where we really look like a hacker. What we can do now is go ahead and enter burp suite followed by and so this is going to be our interceptor so i'm giving you an example of how to test for sql injection vulnerabilities using available payloads so go and click on to next click start burp so now we're starting up our interceptor and what we can do right now is to go ahead and click onto the proxy tab and ensure that intercept is on head back over into the site all right go to the top right corner okay and what we can do now is go ahead and go to foxy proxy select onto burp suite done now go ahead and click on to go and now we have the interception through web suite so what i can do here is go ahead and do a right click send this over into intruder and what i can do now is to change this up a little bit so here we have the gi joe retaliation and what i want to do now is add a payload marker right here okay and to add one more payload marker so this is going to be the injection point so this is the place that we're supplying all those different payloads hit over into payloads select onto payload settings load and now we have the word list so i can hit over into say the following of some common ones that we can use as part of sql injection so i go to the blue fuss injections sql.txt so here we have all these different examples of the sql injection payloads and once you're ready go ahead and click start attack so we are looking out for parts of the site that is vulnerable different entry points that are vulnerable to it so if i go ahead and do the attack pause we can see that we have several payloads that are injected i can click onto the response and we can see which one got a hit by looking at the response coming back from the server so if i scroll down a little more we can see possibly some examples of payload that went through however there is a problem here the problem is that it doesn't give any form of error messages so if i go ahead and turn off burp suite as our interceptor and i just leave the payload of single code and i hit enter on this you can see that there are no error messages however 
One thing that stand out is that we no longer have the number of movie tickets showing up meaning that there seems to be some problem, which is why it's called a blind sequel injection, because we do not get much other information out of it. And we can only use some kind of logic to test that it is vulnerable, meaning that we must succeed in our sequel injection attack in order to get a response. If we don't succeed, then we do not have the total value of the movie tickets coming out. Furthermore, while this is a pretty simple payload for us to use, and of course it succeeded, and we can see from the result at the bottom that we have 100 movie tickets available in our stock. What happens here is that if I was to switch the security level to high and I click set on that, and now if I was to go ahead and use the same payload, it will not work. All right, so if I go and enter, say, single code or one equal one, I hit enter on this, you see right at the bottom, same thing. It, it doesn't work. We do not hit a response out of it. And as part of crawling through the site, we can uncover a part of the site that offers web services definition language. If you clicked onto it, it tells us exactly how to communicate with this web service. And it comes to two parts. One is the request that you're sending over into the service. And a second is the response. So in this case, we have the following of X as the string. So we're sending a string over like Iron Man. And number two, we get a response of integer from the site, which is the number of movie tickets. So this gives us a definition of how we can communicate with the web service, regardless of whichever programming language that we are going to code in. And this standardization is a common practice across many different types of systems and services to give them a structure that you can communicate with those different services, regardless of what platform they're on, what systems they're on, what languages they're coded in. And what we can do now is go over and enter SOAP UI. So this is the simple object access protocol user interface that help us be able to cleanly communicate with that web service. So from the endpoint explorer, I click on to close and I'll go on to top left corner and click on to SOAP, click on that and go back over into the browser. All right, copy this link, go back over into SOAP UI, paste it onto the initial WSDL, and we can just give it and use the default name, in this case, WS Soap, click onto OK for that. So now it's loading, and you can see from the left side, we have the following. We can expand onto Get Ticket Stock, double click on to request one, and you can see the following information here. So you can see right here, we have the URL that we're targeting, wssoap.php, and within this, we have the XML format that we can supply. And of course, in this case, we have a question mark here. So this question mark is the one that we are targeting to place our input. So what I can do now is go ahead and change this string over into say, Iron Man, and from the top left corner, I go ahead and click on the submit request, and we can see on the right side, we have a response here, and that's 53. So this is the same response that we got in earlier through the web browser. And what I can do now is I can place my SQL injection payload here instead of through the browser so that we are able to target another part of the site that is possibly vulnerable to SQL injection attack. And it could be using a completely different firewall to inspect all these different requests or possibly even having no firewalls at all. So if I click on to send requests, you can see on the right side now that we have the different response. So it means that our SQL injection payload is working. Furthermore, we can also check on the length of the database. So in this case, we have n length database equal five. So if I go ahead and submit onto the request, we can see from the response on the right that we got 53. So it means that yes, the database length is five. If I was to change this to four, we will get a different response. So if I go ahead and click send, I see the XML. In this case, we have no response for it. So what we're showing here and demonstrating here is that we are able to send all these different type of SQL injection payloads to test for the right response that validates the logic of the query. And with this knowledge now, it means that we can place in different types of queries to see which one gives us a good response to validate that yes, the database length, the database name, the table name, and all this different information are right and proper. However, doing that manually is going to take a long time. So why not let's automate that? So what we can do now is go back over in the SOAP user interface, click onto raw and go ahead and copy the whole request right here. And we're going to save it. So what I can do now is head back over into terminal. And what I can do here is create a new request. So maybe I'll do a touch SOAP UI request, hit enter on that. And I can do a mouse pad SOAP UI request, all right? 
And what I can do is go ahead and paste it over. So we had created one earlier, but now no worries. What I can do here is I can change this up a little. So I'll change this over into asterisk. So what we're doing now is we're going to use SQL map to help us run the automation. So by having asterisk right here, what it does is that it help us tell SQL map that this is the payload marker. This is the place where you inject your payload into. Now, what I have here is using SQL map, which is our automated SQL injection tool. And we're going to use the request of SOAP UI request. And we're going to use a technique. In this case, B stands for blind based SQL injection. And we want to list down all those different tables. So go ahead and hit enter on that. And right now you can see the following custom injection marker found in post body. Yes. SOAP XML data. All right. So yes. Done. Now we've gotten all of this different information of the table. So we have the databases has 17 tables. All right. We have information schema. We have the following of Drupal Gaten and we're BW APP. So this is the one that we're targeting. So in this case, we have users and users may contain things like usernames, passwords that we're really interested in. So let's go ahead and target the users table in database BW APP. Now we have slightly changed the command earlier. So right now we're targeting the database of BW APP and we are targeting the table of users and we want to dump everything out. So let's go ahead and hit enter on that. Yes, we're using a custom injection marker. All right, yes, SOAP XML, yes, and boom, done. We managed to get out all this information. Do you want to store hashes or temporary file? I say no for that. Do you want to crack them via dictionary-based attack? Let's go ahead and enter no for that. So I want you to see the structure right here. So we gotten the email, all right, and of course we targeted Hacker Loy. And we have the following. This is the hashed password, 7C222FB2927, so on and so forth. Let's do a copy selection on this, and we can check right now what type of hash is it running on. So go ahead and enter hash identifier, hit enter on that, paste the value right here, hit enter, and scroll all the way up, and we can see the following of the possible hash all right, so char1 or MySQL char1 pass. And the interesting thing, of course, is if you've managed to get only the hash value, you can still go ahead and troll that into search engine and you could see some results over here. So in this case, we have char1.gromweb.com. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we get as the result. So char1, and let's go ahead and scroll into the results. So was successfully reversed into the string of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is Mr. Hackaloy's password. I hope you've learned something useful and valuable. Remember, smash the like button and turn on notification to the channel so that you're kept abreast whenever you get hacked. Sorry, whenever there's a new video that we release for you. Stay tuned for the next tutorial.